In Jesus' name I pray. Put your hands together as you take your beautiful seat. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. It's only one hour some minute they gave me, so I'll be doing it very snappy. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 1. And anywhere I want to stop, you will stop with me there. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Let's go. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I said unto you, Thou shalt not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat up upon the mountain of olives, the disciple came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of the coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many of you have been deceived already by false doctrine. May the Lord show you mercy today in Jesus' name. For many shall come in the name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You are seeing it in the internet. Some people say they are the last Messiah. Some people say Jesus is not coming again. Everybody is saying their own. And that's to tell you that Jesus is on his way coming. And here shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And many nations, you can hear war all over. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you what the Muslims are doing now. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. As many people hate Orimo now, even pastors hate Orimo because of the truth, and other nations too. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. That is what is happening in our midst. Many shall hate you because of righteousness. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. This is where I will stop for now. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Many of our members, many of you coming from different churches, many Christians today because of iniquity seen in the world, many we are waiting for Christ coming, but now they are backsliding, they have gone back. And some of you, the last time, 2013, 2012, you were on fire for Christ. You were ready for Jesus. Many people thought that Jesus would come 2013 or 2014. But now many of you are taking the, the things of God to be played. You are not taking it serious. You are even sitting inside gossip. You are lying. You are even not afraid. No fear of God. And you just bother tying your head, holding Bible in your hand. And you know you are just coming from backbiting. You are not bothered to come for chapter meeting again. You don't want to know about what is happening there. You don't even care to buy CDs, books to read, to develop your spiritual life. Some of you, you don't even listen to messages. Some of you go from one place to another to prophets for prophesying over your life. All you want is quick miracles some of you don't have time with the bible some of you don't even care for evangelism again visitation prayer and fasting many of you now don't have time to study the word of god all of you now many of you have been occupied by compromising and then anger have take over pride have take over gossip backbiting love of money Many people that were with us they are not with us again love of money have carried them material things pride all these kind of things we are praying that god will open their eyes many of you new members old members i'm talking to you some of you are still dressing in a naked moon your neck your your dressing is not correct you are still bleaching some of you are still putting on rubber thread some of you are still putting on drilling if you are here this is your first time listen to me nobody with the attachments we go to heaven you put on weave on your hair put on hearing we will come there because today i will tell you about a little bit about hell hallelujah 
all these shining stones on your body, on your cloth. As our Father in the Lord has said to us, these things are satanic. God has given him the wisdom and revelation has come about it. And some of you are still putting on this shiny stone on your cloth, putting on attachment, putting on rubber thread. This is disobedience. And the Bible has told us disobedience is next to witchcraft. So if you are a member of a remote, your neck, your cloth neck is still open, your skirt half split, your, 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 your back is still open. Let me tell you, you are not ready yet for heaven. One of our sisters in Yanya, the Lord rebuke her and told her that you are still in a remorse. With all what I'm telling you, and your sleeve is still up to your shoulder here, you are not ready yet for heaven. And we have been teaching you here, telling you people where your short sleeve should be, where your long sleeve should be. We are not part of this world. We are a holy child of God. Hallelujah. Some of you are very zealous to do the work of God, but your behavior or attitude is bad. You don't know how to talk to somebody, you don't know how to approach somebody, you don't know how to respond, and these are all behavior of the devil. Some of you, your name has started to be fading in the book of life because every day you are waxing cold, you are following the worldly style, and now we are seeing the way some of you are even doing your hair tie. These are all things that are not good because these are things of the world. Hallelujah. Why am I telling you this? I'm going to share a revelation with you about three revelations by the grace of God. For you to know about four revelations, I will take it snappy very fast. For you to know how God is opening our eyes every day, I'm going to talk to the believers and unbelievers. Because there are some things believers are doing, they don't know that they are going to hell. And we forget that this, our God we are serving, is a jealous God. Anything you take more than God activities, one of his word, he will not happy about it alone. I'm going to share some revelations to you to awaken you to perfection for heaven. So that 2017, your name will be in the book of life and you will keep yourself busy. Hallelujah. The first revelation is concerning our late sister in Lagos. One of our late sister in Lagos, not sister Zeno. This is another sister. I used to call her auntie. She's an LA woman. I used to call her auntie. I know her very well more than Sister Zeno. 2015 April Women Conference, she was not able to be here. What happened, I don't know. I asked for her. They said that she was not able to be here. Maybe she was not feeling well or financial constraint. After the conference, a week later, we had a call. We, have, we received a call from Lagos that this uh, woman, this our sister, she has passed on. But because I was very close with her, it bothers me a lot. What was running through my mind is, uh, if she know that she is going to die, she should have come for this conference and revive her life. Because many of you, as you are here now, you came in in sin, but you go back as a free man. Your sin will be washed away. God will be going to clutch you with a new garment. So this is the benefit of coming together in a holy sanctuary. So I was like, ah, if she should have known that after the conference one week, she's going for glory, she should have been here. So I was bothered. I was like, oh God, I pray she make it because we want to see many members of Orimo there because we are going to celebrate our God for, cre for establishing Orimo. We are going to thank Jesus, especially for Orimo in heaven. So I was thinking, where, what is happening? What are, where, is she, where, where has she gone to now? So, during that time, I was thinking like that. Let me just give you a small description and observation of me towards her. She was zealous in Orimo, in Lagos there. Because anytime we visited Lagos, she would always be in the house where we would lodge me and Pastor Porika. She would cook food, she would greet us. And she's somebody that quickly, she corrects you. And she corrects you like somebody that has understood holiness. You will tell you, don't do like this. No, we should not do like this. Please, mommy, tell these women, they should not do like that, do like this. And she's respectful. So when somebody dies like that in this good behavior, you just believe that she has made it. Hallelujah. So in doing this, my thinking, I had a revelation concerning her. I saw a high pit that cut into two. A high pit like when they are constructing roads. So I was like, how can this thing be very high like this? I was high, I was on top of the, where they cut the road. So I was like, imagine which machine that's able to cut this mountain very high like that. So when I get close to it, I was trying to look down. It was very down deep like that. And I saw a road entering a tunnel. So I saw a woman standing there in a confused mood. So I, was, I, I did not recognize her. So when she was turning, I think she later saw me ahead afar off. 
So later now, she called my name and said, Sister Linda, Sister Linda. And I was like, who is calling me? I was shocked. And I was wondering, how come she able to go down to that place? Because I look around, there was no road that carried somebody down there. Then how come she managed to go down to that pit? Because the place where I was standing was very high. If somebody said, you want to jump there, you will just die. So I was wondering, where is this? Why comes this woman reach in that, 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 that place? And then she said, she said, I know you have heard that I've died. That I hope you recognize me. I'm auntie, because I used to say auntie, auntie. She to say my daughter. So I said, yes, they told us. And then she said, my daughter, she started crying. I'm not ready yet. I am not ready yet for this journey. Since I was standing here, I've been hearing all through depart, depart, depart. And people are crying. I'm afraid to go in. And then they say, if what you people have been te- teaching us in a remote is exactly like that, then I'm not worthy to stand before God. They will be teaching you. You will not take it serious. That the Rika will say something, somebody will say, my pastor say, Revelation will go and say, ah, I've heard about that. You are playing with it. Maybe she was like that. Even when she was close, but she was taking it, maybe familiarity spirit. Don't make her to be sober. So, she now say, I'm afraid to proceed in that place. Because there are some things in my life that I have not settled and I have not come out of it. And then they say, I have been here. Plenty of people, they have been telling them, depart, depart. And it's very painful. I have their cry. And then they say, I hope they have not buried my body. Because please, I want them to pray for me that God will send me back. I'm not ready. I don't want to go to hell. And then I reply, I say, it's like they told us that that night, because how it all happened, they said she went home. She started feeling funny. All of a sudden, by the time they rush her to the hospital, she does die on the way. So when they reach to the hospital, they just carry her straight to the mortuary. So I told her, I said, well, we heard that they have put your body in the mortuary. She do like this. No! How will they expect me? If God give me a second chance to come, how will they expect me to come inside my body? Did these people want to push me earlier? I don't want to go. I'm not ready yet. She was crying. I was confused. Uh -uh. Auntie, what do you mean you're not ready yet? What is it? Do you mean that with all this time you have spent in this ministry, you have had, they were one of them selling the CDs. You know, sometimes you recommend CDs and say, ah, this CD is powerful. Daddy preached very well. And now you are telling me you are not ready yet. And then she said, my sister, my daughter, please help me out. Help me. So me, I was thinking that maybe she want me to go and pick her from that place. So I told her that I don't even know the road. From this place to go down here. She said, no. Where you are standing now, begin to pray for me. Begin to pray that God will send me back. Let God give me a second chance. Please, I'm not ready yet. Truly, I'm not ready yet. If what pastor have been telling us, teaching us, you know, the more, if it, that is what, how it's happening here, I'm not ready yet. So, and then he was telling me that, please, one all those ones that we used to sit down, my friends, I know them by name, I will not mention them here. That I should tell them, oh, they used to say that you know women in backbiting, gossip, jealousy, criticism. Maybe where one woman passed, they will criticize. Where this one, they will backbite. Where this one? And on, unfortunately for her, she died before them. One of the group members have gone. Maybe you have your own group that you sit down to criticize people. And then she said, I should tell them that now see what has happened to her. That they should stop. Because this place here, that, that Erika is not even telling us this, the standard of this place well. That since he has been standing here, he has not heard somebody say, welcome, don't depart. Because what he has been hearing, the judgment of the angels to the people, is very hard. That she cannot be able to stand before God because she knows there are some things in her life that she is not perfect about. She started crying. She started crying bitterly. That please, we should pray for her to come back. That she will come and do a restitution. That she will come and repent, confess her sins. Please, there are some secret sins in her life that she was afraid to confess. I don't know. 
Some of you are ashamed. You are ashamed to confess your sin. Maybe you, you're a witch. Over there, you will be crying inside the fire. God, I will, in fact, I will stand naked to confess. Give me just a second chance. This trip, I will not be afraid of no man. But it's too late. Fire all over their body. And then, she was pleading with me to pray for her. Please, pray for me. Tell my friends that we used to sit down back by it, that they should take this holiness serious. They should listen to us very carefully. That this judgment thing that they are telling us, some of us, some of them, they will take that, is it like that? It's like that. So when she was busy talking to me, crying, some group of people like men came and carried her. She was crying, they carried her inside. And then I woke up. I don't know. Maybe you are like that. You will come here and listen and go and continue in your sin. You don't want to repent. And you're going to be painful for you. Somebody was saying that the devil was telling us that any or remote member, it's me, the devil was telling me that any or remote member that miss heaven, I personally, Lucifer, will torture that person because you people we are almost at the gates. Because everything about the truth, the doctrine, the exposition of, of eternity, that we don't know what is happening there. God has given us like a movie. You can even know what is happening there now. And you play and go to hell. Lucifer say, I personally will torture that person. So all these things you are hearing, if you are playing with it, you are doubting it. Some of you are still putting powder, perfume, roll on. I pity you. I pity you. And this hellfire is real. Hellfire is real. I'm telling you, as I'm talking to you, some people are trooping there now. As I was driving there before yesterday, I was talking with a sister. I was telling the sister, I said, there are some times, if I sit down, I'm eating. If my mind just run to my mother, I will stop eating. I said, oh God, I'm eating. But she's in hell. She's not eating now. I don't know what you are doing. Sometimes I'll be drinking water. And I say, ah, she's dead. She has not drank water for up to 8, 12 years now. Oh God, Jesus. She cannot come back. And the Lord is talking to you. That you should repent of your sin. If you miss heaven, nobody will pity you there. We are telling you, I personally am telling you, hellfire is real. Jesus told me about this ministry. I'm not here because nobody invited me here. I've said it before. It was Jesus that told me to join or remove that this is my place. This word that you are going to listen from your son, my son mouth. I don't even know Pastor Rica. I've not even... No, I don't listen to Pastor Rica. I don't know him. I said this in Sierra Leone before even coming to Nigeria. I said there is a man that be in this ministry. Jesus says he's his son. Please, I want to hear him because Jesus told me he did not recommend me to no pastor on earth. He did not send me to no denomination. Like say, go and be there. He said, go and work out your salvation. In this ministry, I was very, very, I was very agile. A brother that testifies is Sierra Leone, but I will tell you, I don't joke for a in my country. Because I see that, ah, Jesus said here yeah, I should walk here. I will not allow no man to spoil it. I will not. But some of you are compromising. And some of you, your loved one is in hell. Cry with your name. You want to go to hell? Do you want to go to hell? Some of you are still holding on to anger. Some of you are doing backbiting. Some of you are doing gossip. Some of you are still doing witchcraft practice. Some of you are here, you are zealous, but you know you are an evil person. Do you want to go to hell? Do you want to go to hell? Hellfire is real. I'm telling you, if you die now, you are standing before God. They, they are marking, just like exam, all our percentage. You, you are not going for evangelism. Chapter meeting, you are not going. You only a member of Orimo when you come for conference. In your state, no chapter meeting. In your village, no chapter meeting. As they are playing life cry, begin to check your life. Because we don't know. That woman did not come for 2015 women conference. And after the conference, she died. Maybe Jesus will come one week after this conference. 
Rapture can take place at any time. We don't know what the enemy is planning against anyone here. Maybe it's your time to go and meet God. I used to tell people I'm not afraid of death. If I'm going to heaven. And I'm praying, God, if my time to go to heaven is sweet. When you're reading the book, How to Get to Heaven, The Life Revelation, you want to be in heaven now. We don't know who we go next. Who the Lord will say go. Our sister, Sister Zeno, was telling the husband, Don't bother about this body. I am in heaven. Rejoice with me. Don't cry. Talk on, don't cry. <laughs> Listen to the voice of hell. Revive your soul again. Go back to holiness. If you miss hell, if you miss heaven, Lock the woman by. Hell, you will go there. There is terrible thing happening under your feet. There is hell. Something is going on now. Every day, people are entering hell. There is no rest in hell. There is no peace. There is no water. There is no light. There is no love. Everybody is angry in hell. People that have died for 15 years, 30 years, they have not drunk water. They have not seen light. No fresh air. To say the place is hot. Remove me for some time. This is people crying. Maybe your auntie is there. Your husband is there. Your late husband is there. Maybe your late daughter, your child is there. Your neighbor. That all of you are living a sinful life. They are the one crying and calling your name. They are gone. Tell my sister. This woman was telling me. Tell those one they know themselves. That we sit in, in the morning ministry. But biting others. Now she has died. And gone to hell. What are you waiting for? Who is the person that you are sitting in your chapter doing gossip about? You don't love your coordinator. You don't love your women leader. Women leader, coordinator, you are hard with the people. You are bullying them. You are frustrating them. Which heaven do you want to go? Somebody is crying with your name. My mother say, my daughter, tell your sisters that you people should not come here. Please. Everybody is crying in hell. A small boy say, Please, Jesus, send me back. I cannot bear this. I cannot stand this. Which is a wizard. I'm crying in hell. God, I will repent. I will repent. Jesus, save me. What are you waiting for? Begin to confess your sin. You don't know what you have done. You are busy thinking that your name is in the book of life. I'm telling you, don't die in ignorance. You know what you have done this year? We are ending up this year now. Backbiting, gossip. If you have done it, oh, begin to say, God, show me mercy. Maybe you have not done good. You have not done well for the Lord this 2016. You have not done plenty in evangelism. You have not opened any chapter. You have not supported the work of God. You don't use to pay tight. Tell God, God have mercy on me. I will not continue like this. Oh, Jesus, save me.